Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for making that difficult choice. Um, yeah, you're welcome to the case management uh, high school and child protection minimum standard high school. Um, I invite Joanna and Susanna to take us forward. Excellent. Thank you, Acheng. Welcome, everybody. I'm glad to have you with us. I think some more people are, are joining. Um, my name, as you know, is Joanna Wedge, and I'm one of the co-chairs of the CPMS Working Group. Um, and I'll give a chance to the others who are gonna be presenting with us to introduce themselves. Hi, I'll just say a quick hello. So I'm Susanna Davis. I'm uh, the other uh, co-lead of the CPMS Working Group. Hi everyone, my name is Annelou Skouhars. Um, I uh, am the co-lead of the case management task force uh, from the UNICEF site uh, jointly with uh, Crystal Stewart who unfortunately couldn't be here today. Um, and she's the other co-lead from IRC. Um, and thank you everyone for, for joining our session today. So that's who's gonna be presenting. Um, let us run just very quickly through this session. As I said, there's no exams, there's no pass or fail, um, but we do hope that you'll be inspired and maybe even join um, our working group slash task force slash high schools in the months to come. Um, so the session is that the uh, Anne Luce will uh, present on the case management um, task force and their activities and so on. Um, we're going to be having um, a Q&A, but we thought we would brainstorm. We've brainstormed a few questions you may ask first. So we're going to ask you to, um, to be ranking those in, in a few minutes, uh, and, but there'll also be some time for you to think of other questions, put them into the chat box at any time, and we'll weave them in to the session that we have with you today. Um, and then uh, after case management, it'll be the CPMS working group, uh, giving you some updates and so on. And then we'll have time for those questions towards the end uh, of the session. So with no further ado, I'm gonna pass the floor back to Anne Luce and to talk about the case management task force. Thank you, Joanna. And thanks everyone for being here today. Um, so basically, before we start, I just wanted to have a very quick, uh, do a very quick poll uh, to get an idea of who we have uh, joining us today. Um, so, you know, we are a shared session and it, it would be nice to have an idea of uh, how familiar you are with case management before we start our session. Um, so please feel free to um, uh, go to the Mentimeter and complete the poll and also to introduce yourself in the chat if you if you would like. Okay, so it seems that most of everyone joining here are actually quite familiar with child protection case management, which is great. Um, and also some people who are less familiar. So very good to know. Please feel free to continue filling the poll. Um, but since we don't have uh, so much time, I will start, um, you know, our session on case management. Uh, so just for those of you who are uh, less familiar with case management, I'll just give a very brief overview of, of what is case management uh, before we go into the work of the task force. Um, so case management is, is an approach uh, through which uh, we try to address the needs of individual children um, uh, and their families um, in case a child has been harmed or is potentially at risk of being harmed. Uh, so a caseworker is then linked uh, to a child and their family or caregivers, uh, and they provide support in a systematic manner to that child um, in their di direct environment. Um, so it can be direct support and it can be that they refer uh, children to other services, but it is key that the support is actually provided in a systematic manner. So it's not a one time off uh, thing. It's, it's, it's a continuous um, activity to support um, the child and the family. 
And since we are here with our uh, colleagues from the minimum standards, uh, I just wanted to uh, flag that uh, case management is uh, standard 18 of the minimum standards, um, which you can find under pillar three. Uh, so I can recommend everyone to, to have a look at the 2019 minimum standards uh, for more details uh, on the standard, on key actions and uh, measurement and other guidance. Thank you. I think we can move one, one slide further. Thank you. So uh, as the case management task force, um, it is our role to provide uh, technical guidance and uh, develop case management tools and resources uh, to strengthen services and, and systems of care in humanitarian settings. So currently, uh, we consist of 16 agencies, um, unfortunately not all of them are, are uh, on the screen at the moment. Uh, we also uh, have IOM, DRC, HUDAS, Alkin, and the MHPSS Collaborative um, that are part of the task force. And we virtually come together as a group uh, on a monthly basis um, in which we uh, provide updates on, on the different uh, activities uh, on our work plan. Um, we discuss, uh, we share new initiatives and you know, coordinate um, on, on all the things that we, we need to coordinate on um, as different uh, case management uh, actors. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so the way that we work is that uh, at the end of each year, we jointly agree on uh, a work plan for the following year. Um, so for each of the activities uh, that we do, we identify uh, a lead agency who will take the lead in uh, moving that activity forward. And we have supporting agencies who um, support the lead agency in completing the, um, on contributing to the activity. Um, so they're basically uh, small working groups. Uh, not each agency is uh, involved in each activity, um, but we have small groups that, that work on specific activities together. And we have this divided uh, under five sort of general work streams. Um, so we have a work stream on, on developing guidance uh, for case management. Uh, we have a work stream on coordination, uh, on information management, where we work closely together uh, with the CPIMS plus um, uh, teams. We work on uh, capacity building um, and also uh, measurement and evaluation. Um, so as we have many activities uh, in the coming minutes, I'll just um, highlight a few of the key activities that uh, the Case Management Task Force has been working on um, in 2021. So the first activity that we will uh, look into is uh, a joint activity with the Learning and Development Working Group um, to develop uh, two learning modules on transitioning uh, to remote case management um, and to provide case management by phone or provide part of the case management services uh, through phone. Um, the second activity is um, a joint activity with the community-led child protection task force that you heard about earlier in the pitch as well, um, uh, which is a joint uh, activity um, to provide a better understanding of community volunteers and their engagement in the case management process. So I just want to mention here that um, Although part of the resources were launched in the summer, uh, the project is actually still ongoing. Um, and lastly, um, uh, an activity that I will speak a little bit more about is the update of the interagency child protection case management training package um, to update and improve uh, the existing package with uh, more specialized modules um, to advance caseworkers' uh, knowledge and skills. Thank you. So more than a year and a half have already passed uh, since the onset of, of COVID-19. And last year, the Case Management Task Force has developed a, a range of guidance uh, to support the continuation and adaptation of case management uh, during the pandemic, including um, the technical notes on adaptation of uh, case management uh, to the COVID-19 pandemic. So this year, um, we have worked together with the LND working group to actually um, turn part of that guidance into training modules. Um, so based on priorities provided by the uh, by, by field practitioners, um, 
two uh, training modules were developed, one on transitioning to remote case management, which is uh, intended for case management managers, um, technical advisors, anyone who is designing um, or managing the program, uh, and a training module that is directed uh, at uh, caseworkers uh, themselves on uh, how to provide um, services uh, via phone. Um, so the two modules were launched during a webinar um, earlier this year, and um, they included also a, a panel of case uh, management practitioners um, who reflected jointly on, on how um, we have progressed, um, what worked well, uh, what continues to be a challenge. Um, so the learning modules and the webinar recording for this activity um, are available and um, after the presentation, I will uh, make sure to put the link in the chat. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anne. The other team member is ready to come in. Excellent, I assume that's, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Sorry, I did I pass the time already? Yeah. No. No. no? What do you need to quickly wrap up and, and lose? It's okay. Um. Uh. Well, I yeah. Let me just very quickly just go through these. Then sorry, I didn't was not aware that the, the ten minutes were were passed. Um. So yeah, the other activity I wanted to highlight was just uh, the community engagement in, in case management, um, which uh, for which the report was launched on, on May 10, um, and a toolkit um, um, is still under development uh, that will provide um, uh, more guidance and very practical tools on um, engaging community members um, in child protection case management. And yes, lastly, the interagency training package um, is a two-year project that is currently led by IRC um, to update the, the existing training uh, package. Um, and the, the update will be um, aligned with the new minimum standards and other uh, new um, guidance and, and resources that have been developed since uh, the initial training package. And it will be more focused on um, competencies and skills rather than um, the case management process. Um, and it's been designed as a, as a graduated learning uh, pathway. So it's not a one-off training, but it's sort of building blocks that will um, that you can implement like throughout uh, the startup of, of uh, case management. And Yes, the other activities, uh, I don't have time to go in, in uh, detail uh, in the other activities, but this is just a quick overview of other uh, things that we are working on within the task force um, that you can keep an eye out for um, that will be coming out uh, this year and next year. So lastly, um, how to join the case management task force. So if, uh, if your agency is not yet uh, a member of the task force, but you would like to be involved, um, you can reach out to the email address that um, is shown on the screen. Um, we'll have one or two members per agency. Uh, and we have some requirements of you know, active participation, really. Um, we don't have people who, um, who join the task force um, without participating or leading on specific activities. So it's a quite a, an active a task force. And if you or your agency are interested, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to the email address that you see um, on the screen. Thank you very much. Um, and um, Thanks, I hand it over, I think, to... Yeah, I'll take over. Thank you so much for that. And we'll have time at the end for questions as well about any of those resources or other things that people would like to ask around case management. Um, I'm going to jump in and say uh, that I mentioned we have brainstormed a number of questions in order to get the Q&A session running. Uh, we have brainstormed a number of questions. So if that could be shared, uh, Kat, um, we are going to ask you to rank those. So if you could go to, hopefully in the chat box, the group map um, has just shown up. 
if you click on that list, you'll then be able to prioritize which of these questions would you like us to answer. So if you could give, uh, you know, 30 seconds to go over there um, and have a look at, um, at these five questions and you rate them over on the right hand side as Kat just showed on the screen. And then we'll try to work our way through these questions later in our session. And apologies, I did just rate that question. Um, <laughs> hope that's okay. <laughs> we'll see. So each of you have the chance to do that by clicking on that link. Hopefully you've had a chance to use group map before. If you have any troubles, then please in the chat, ask Kat for some help and she can explain it a bit more. All right, let us turn over to um, the main presentation, please Kat, on the CPMS working group activities. Um, we also have a, uh, well, I'm gonna say it's a bit of a test, a quiz, um, but there's no, you know, pass or fail, don't worry. I said there was no exam and it's true. It's only a minor quiz. Um, but if you can show our screen, thanks so much. Um, we're gonna go into the activity which we set up, which is a matching activity. Oh, that's the answer. Please don't show that. <laughs> um, there should be a link to something that, um, that Julie set up where you are asked to match all the different um, activities that we've been doing alongside the objectives that we set out for ourselves as a working group. And it's a chance for you to see kind of what the working group has been up to. Kat, do you have? Uh, sorry, Joanna, um, just because they're both, both of those are in group map, one has to be done before the other. I can't do both group maps at the same time. Okay, <laughs> fair enough, that makes sense. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. If we can um, close out that first group map. Yeah, no problem. So give me two seconds there. So we'll move to, as I say, this second activity. You're going to have um, two um, sides of the screen and we're asking you to match the activities, the, the things that the working group has been up to, to the objectives that we set out for ourselves. Um, Okay, there so we there's, go. there's, there's a, a new link in the map. I've just sent it in the first two languages and I'm just sending the instructions for the second two languages there. Um, so everyone should be able to see um, the quick review for them to look at it before we start the physical matching. Would you like me to share that on screen just so people can see what we're looking at? Yes, no. It so you can move the green over to on top of the blue to see the description of the activity with the activity itself. So I'll give you 60 more seconds as a group. Maybe put that timer on, Kat. Um, you can work on one of them. You can, re, you can move the green if you don't agree with where it is. So for example, we still have a set of tools to help CPHA actors engage other sectors in our common goal of protecting children. No one knows yet where that goes. Okay. And we're gonna close it out. There we go. It, you can keep working on it because there are a few other, a few other answers there. 
All right, as you move those around, let's get back to our main screen. Um, and if you could put up the PowerPoint presentation, I'm gonna take you on a whistle stop tour through those correct answers. Can I have the next slide? Right, so here we have our, pri our four priorities. Uh, national and local actors, so localization, which of course fits in with the strategic priorities now of the Alliance. Um, the second one is about working across sectors, so our multi-sectoral and integrated programming objective. Our third one is around contextualizing and implementing the CPMS in your context where you are working. Um, and to support you to do that with tools and advice and um, put you together with people who've done it before and so on. And then our fourth priority is around increasing capacity to implement the CPMS. So working alongside the learning and development working group in particular. If you go to the next slide, you'll see some of the actual specific resources that we have. Um, so our implementation toolkit, uh, so essential information on how to promote and implement the CPMS. It's got a number of uh, resources underneath it um, around messaging, around contextualization, around um, some implementation uh, checklists and so on. The next one is the contextualization video. Um, so this is the short video that's animated that explains why we would adapt the minimum standards and how to go about doing so in your context. Um, it is available in English and Arabic at the moment, uh, and the French and the Spanish should be coming out by the end of the month. Uh, all of these resources we're trying to make available in all four languages. So for example, the, the toolkit is as well. Uh, if you go to the Alliance's YouTube, uh, page or, or channel, you'll find the CPMS video series. So this is a growing set of five eight minute videos introducing the CPMS, uh, as well as um, introducing Pillar 4, the Working Across Sectors Initiative, um, specific standards like SGBV, um, and it is available in that number of languages. The e-course, hopefully loads of you know about this and maybe have used it. Again, it's a growing free core e-course that unpacks the CPHA principles, our approaches, and a number of standards. And that number of standards is uh, increasing all the time. There are 11 modules now. There are four more, six more, that are going to be released by the end of the year. Um, and currently the whole thing is being translated into Arabic and Spanish. And as you might've seen on our website, on, on the web page, um, we have, um, uh, and a date uh, towards the end of this uh, month for Spanish at the very least. So that's quite exciting. On to the next slide. Hopefully you were able to um, match these. Uh, a briefing pack is uh, your tool for presentations. Uh, we're just uh, updating it um, to have about six slides per standard uh, and it will be available immediately in French and Spanish and we'll be looking to translate the whole thing into Arabic. Our illustrations gallery. Now I mentioned this, sometimes if you're searching for words or you know that your audience really needs some images, if you go on our, um, our web page, you'll be able to see by standard um, a set of free downloadable drawings. Um, and the settings are from Bangladesh, from the Middle East and from the Lake Chad region. And a big thank you to our partners who helped us produce those. Uh, Susanna took you through the working across microsites earlier. This is an exciting new hub um, on the Alliance website. It's going to be our landing site for all of us who are working with other sectors, as well as those other sectors directly. So we're hoping that nutrition will come directly there to learn more about working with us, education and so on. And there are four microsites across the languages. So stay tuned and please tell us what you'd like to see on that microsite. Um, very soon, we're not quite finished, we're at a draft um, uh, of the advocacy and communications pack for the working across sectors. It's going to be a set of tools such as social media messages, visuals, advocacy talking points to help us engage with other sectors in our common effort to protect children in humanitarian settings. And then on our last set of resources, on the next slide, you'll be able to see, oh, I thought there was one more. <laughs> I've run through them all, which is great. Um, you'll be able to see here all those different ways that you can connect with us. You can take us to the next slide, Kat, it's okay. Um, 
you can go onto the Alliance uh, main website and look for initiatives and there you'll find the CPMS. Um, you can go to eCourse if you want to search out that specific site. And then of course, working across sectors, that microsite you can look at um, if you search for integration or working across sectors or um, mainstreaming, it'll take us to take you through to that page. And then of course, we have our general email address where we're always happy to hear from you um, and answer any questions you may have or put you in touch with people and so on. So that's it in terms of um, our presentation. Um, we, I'm gonna pass you over to Susanna who's gonna explain the next section. Thanks, Joanna. So I think now we should have some time to um, go through and look at some of the questions that you ranked that you'd like to have answered. So if I can ask Kat to share those. And um, so just just because we had to, to move from this um, quite quickly, did we want to give anyone a couple more seconds or do we want to look at the results we have already? Do we have results, Kat, or should we? Yeah, it's not, that's, a, that's a very good start to this question. Yes, we do actually have results there. And it looks like there was probably about 10 people that worked on it, so. Okay, well, I'm as I can see that we've got 44 people in the room, um, maybe we can just reshare that link to the group map and sure. give people um, maybe just a minute to work on it because we want to make sure that uh, that you will get the chance to say what which questions you'd like answered. Of course, um, give me three seconds here. Thanks very much. So the link is now back in the chat. Um, I'm just quickly going to share my screen again, just maybe for those that found it um, a, a bit difficult. So you should be taken to this rate page. And here you'll be able to either just automatically drag the bar back and forth. Um, obviously the rating out, out of five, um, five is, is we really like it. Um, let's go with this question. Or if you click on it, um, it will just move directly to, to where it was. Right, so we'll give people maybe 30 seconds. Thanks, Kat. So yeah, go go and go and give those questions a rank and we'll um, we'll see which amongst the three of us can um, can try and provide some answers there. And as you if you haven't seen in the chat box uh, from Joanna, you're also really welcome if you have a burning question that's not uh, not amongst our list, um, please feel free to to add it to the chat box and we'll we'll see how we can um, we can answer it in the session. All right, Kat, can we maybe go to the to the results now and we'll we'll see if we can get colleagues an answer to at least one or two of these um, before we give um, a little bit more space. All right, so you can see um, the ranks on the side here and let's just see if I can zoom in to make that a little bit bigger for you. Thank you. There I'm we go. I'm sure there's some very young people on the call who could have who could have seen that before. I can only see it because I'm wearing my glasses. <laughs> I'm not one of them. Okay, so it looks um, it looks like at the very top um, is this question around accountability. So there's growing acknowledgement um, that child protection and humanitarian action uh, needs to be more accountable to children and their families. What does that mean for case management and uh, and the minimum standards in a humanitarian context? And Laos, do you want to go first? Sure. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, yeah, for case management, as as a global task force, um, we strive to create resources that you know are adaptable and informed um, by country level uh, practitioners and um, so to answer this question, I, I would like to do it actually on two uh, different levels. So globally, um, we aim to be accountable to children and families by 
defining quality standards, um, by developing open source resources in, in multiple languages, and advocating for improved uh, access to individualized case management services. So an example of this uh, that we're working on through the case management task force um, is, uh, for example, the quality assessment framework that is being developed, uh, which is a tool um, to assess how a particular case management system is set up and operates, uh, and to look at the, the level of quality, the gaps in services, and, and what needs to be improved. Um, the other thing on a global level that we're working on is um, supervision um, uh, and coaching package um, that encourages good practice and standards to be met um, to provide quality services. Um, and then at a country level, um, in terms of accountability, um, uh, we ensure in, in, in the way that the resources and the guidance is set up, um, that there is a feedback uh, mechanism as well from children and their caregivers about the services that they receive. Um, so that's based on that feedback um, in the case management teams can actually adapt their services uh, to better meet uh, the needs of the clients. Um, I hope that answers the question and I'll, I'll hand it to uh, Joanna. Thank you. Super. Or Susan. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Um, the, the issue of accountability, obviously it's now one of the strategic priorities, but it's always been um, central to the CPMS. We talk about ensuring quality and accountability when it comes to having um, humanitarian standards and, and the CPMS in particular. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an always an integral part of what we're trying to achieve. Um, and I think there are different ways that we discuss it or highlight it um, through the use of, of minimum standards. Um, obviously by having standards, we're saying, what are we accountable for? What can you as funders, as a host government, um, as children, as families and colleagues in the humanitarian effort, what can you expect from us in terms of our service delivery, um, our advocacy, our policies, our ways of working and the principles on which we're, you should be holding us accountable to as well. Obviously, we uh, are interested in trying to highlight in the minimum standards um, ways for feedback, ways for people to be able to check in and say whether or not um, we are meeting the quality benchmarks that we're setting for ourselves. Um, so, so that to me is, is part of um, kind of the strengths of having uh, standards as a sector. Um, but there's, there's lots of ways of unpacking that um, measurement against the standards. That's again, kind of a clear way of being accountable um, back to those different parties that I mentioned. But also in the pitch uh, to bring you here, I talked about institutionalization. So it's kind of a big word, but it's the idea that all of the Alliance members have signed up to promote, to adhere to, to use, um, the minimum standards within the organizations as far as they can to make every effort to do so. So one of the ways that we have um, helped our sector be accountable before is having a, uh, a self audit against the minimum standards. And that's something that the working group would like to reinitiate um, over the coming year. So it would be great if you'd like to join us um, in planning for that. Um, because I know we, we know there's a lot of new members and smaller members of the Alliance. Um, and so uh, we're eager to find out ways that are meaningful and valid, but at the same time, not overwhelming and, and scary. That's right, Warchild KT has been doing something like this for a while. So um, that will be one of the agencies that we draw from, Terre des Hommes, Save the Children. Um, so yeah, that, that's how I would answer that question. Is there another one that we want to go to? Well, actually, I'm just looking at time and first, like, thanks, Annalaus um, and, and Joanna for the really great and interesting answers. Um, we are running a little bit behind um, and we've just got five minutes left. So I'm hoping we can take you through one last activity. We wanted to give um, colleagues who are on the call a little bit of a chance to, to feed back to us. Um, we know there are lots of new tools and resources, certainly if you came to the hot off the press session um, 
earlier this afternoon, you might have been overwhelmed by, uh, by the range of those that are available. So we just had a question for you. And Kat, I think we put this in a, um, in a Jamboard, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so if you could just share that. Yeah, and just popping the link in the chat for everyone. It's actually um, a, a map, just like the ones we were just using, sure. um, but, but slightly different all at the same time. So let me just bring it up here. So it looks like this. Um, and all and all anyone needs to do is click on the link in the chat and when you click on here you can just type hello my name is Kat obviously that's not what you're going to write but when you hit enter the question will be there um, for uh, for the team to look at thanks very much Kat so please do please do click on that link to the to the group map we'd love to get your feedback on how can the task force and working group tools and resources that are being developed better reach you in, in your places of work? So if you, um, if you have suggestions about translation or particular types of tools, if you're a huge fan of videos, if you wanna see lots of two-page documents, um, if you're missing case studies, you know any, any ideas or, or feedback that you have on on how we can make sure that um, the, the tools better reach you in your place of work. Um, we'd love to receive, uh, receive that feedback. So please do um, click on the link and feel free to add your ideas there. If for any reason you're having a little bit of trouble accessing it, or you're a bit exhausted from group map, um, feel free to, to put some ideas in just in the Zoom, uh, in the Zoom chat as well, because um, we're really happy to, to receive your feedback there. And you can see jo Joanna is prompting you with a few ideas as well if, um, if you have any feedbacks that you'd like to give. Um, and we just have a, a, few, uh, a few minutes remaining. Um, so you're welcome to, um, to keep adding, uh, keep adding ideas to, to the group map or to, to the chat there. Um, and Kat, I can see that a few are coming up. Could you, could you share the, um, the group map again? And could we zoom in a little bit for, yeah. for those of us with older eyes? Great. Um, so we can see um, we can see a few suggestions there, and I'll be happy just to to share a few of them out, and we'll definitely take these into account. Um, so um, so I can see a couple of comments on translations um, and producing the tools in different languages. Um, so I think we we'll, we we all have that slightly on our agenda, and we'll take that kind of as a huge priority of making sure that we're we're doing things at least in those core languages and, and working together to translate as much as possible. Um, I can see um, uh, I can see an interesting one that's just come up on, on guidance on when, when it's appropriate to use different resources. Um, so seeing when we can kind of introduce uh, those to you. Um, updates on e-courses, um, a couple of comments, well, several comments now as I, as I take a look on um, on promising practices and case studies. Um, we, we definitely take that one on board. And I know from the CPMS working group end, we've got um, we've got a few of those uh, a few of those planned for, for next year. Um, and let me just have a quick look through more on translations. Um, some colleagues interested in, in being in touch through email. So we do have the Alliance newsletter, but um, we can make sure that we're linking out through there. Um, and I see a really important comment from a colleague about a key barrier for us is, is internet and, and bandwidth um, issues. So anything that doesn't require regular or consistent internet access would be great. So kind of light, um, and I appreciate the specificity of this one. I think it's really a helpful one for us to take um, in our own work into the other working groups and task forces. So where we have something that's really light and easy to download our printable resources, things like that. Um, 
So I think we're just about at time. If you have any last ideas, please do put those in um, where we, we take them um, into account as we're, we're planning for the next year. You heard Ann Laos talk a little bit about the process they go through the in the case management uh, task force for planning. So we're happy to take these on board and also to share them with the other working group and task forces. Um, and I think if there's not anything else, I'll just say a huge thank you to all 45 of you who joined us uh, this afternoon um, and to invite you to, to be in touch. Um, and we look forward to, uh, to working with you over the course of the next year. Thanks everyone. And if you're interested in joining the working group, do be in touch by email. <laughs>